everyone welcome back to another vlog you have to excuse the hair i've just showered and i'm trying to let it dry naturally because it's a bit better for your hair i think rather than straightening it and drying it every day so i just thought i would do a little update vlog because i haven't done one for a couple of weeks now because i've been scheduling some more informative type vlogs rather than updating my life which must get so dull um but i thought i'd do a little update what's been going on this week oh and i don't know if i showed you i've got our new sofa's come do you like it nix she likes it. She's about to jump up there and throw everything off it. Watch this. Here she goes. Perfect timing, Nyx. <laughs> so the past couple of weeks has been busy. It's been so busy. Patients are booking in a lot more now. I'm seeing a lot more patients than I was before. A lot of gardening injuries as well. People need to be careful, please, when you're doing your gardening, because I've seen so many injuries that I've had to send to minor injuries or A&E. So, yeah, that's been exciting for me, not so much for the patient, but it's been good for me to see and learn how to deal with that sort of thing, because I haven't really done with traumatic injuries before. So that was quite interesting to do. So this week, uh, yesterday, I had my home visits and it's the first time that, oh, God, what a day. I just got to the end of the day and I, th I said, I just need to go to bed. I don't want to speak to anyone. I don't want to do anything. I literally just need to go to bed. It was such a day and it was one of them days where everything seemed to go wrong. So I got lost a couple of times, going to get into people's houses. I ended up at the wrong house twice. Luckily, I didn't go into the house this time. And they weren't actually in whoever's door I was knocking on. They weren't in, thank God, because I would have looked really, really blimmin' stupid if they answered. And I'm there like, hi. And then every single person had a mixture of blood tests and um, wound dressings, but all the blood tests were really, really difficult to get. They were, they had really difficult veins that would, you just couldn't see them, you couldn't feel them for no love or money, and it was literally just potluck. Luckily, I got all of the bloods. It was one of them days where it just took me a lot longer to find and sort of get the blood from people, but it was one of them days, and it sort of puts a little knock of in your confidence a little bit so I was just like oh please what else can go wrong with this day all my bloods are just rubbish can't find houses I'm ending up at the wrong house it was a bit of a day yesterday and then um towards the second half of the day I went to a patient's house to do their bloods however their partner was hanging off the bed this is an elderly couple hanging off the bed almost on the floor and screaming in agony, couldn't stand, couldn't move, couldn't walk. And I was there like, what? Oh my God, I did not expect this when I walked through this door. I tried to get them up, but they literally couldn't. They couldn't move. They couldn't stand. They were in a lot of pain with their back. And they'd been like that for three days. They hadn't been in the toilet. They'd been using a bottle to go to the toilet in. Really, really awful situation for them. And I was like, oh my God, this is horrendous. I said, I'm going to have to call an ambulance because I literally physically can't do anything. It was literally nothing. It was literally just me, the partner and the patient or the other patient. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. I have to call an ambulance. So I called an ambulance. Um, they come out, they blocked me in as well, so I couldn't get out, which is fine because I wanted to, to be honest, I wanted to stay with the patient anyway, but it did put me behind for like an hour and a half. So that wasn't good because then it put me behind to get back to clinic, to take all my blood samples back for the sample person comes to get the bloods R5. So that put me behind a little bit for that. So when I got in, I was like rushing and doing all these things. Oh, I had a day and then one of the bloods was left behind. So I might have to go back tomorrow, I think now to do that patient's blood again because it got, I was just in such a rush and everything just completely threw me out. It was just one of those things that happened. So yeah, it was the topping of the day. <laughs> I had a hell of a day yesterday. So it's just to make people aware that even though you're a GP nurse and you're not dealing with such acute things you will have acute patients still you will still need to call ambulances you will still need to put people on nebulizers when they come into your clinic but there's a lot of acute stuff that goes on in gp and it's learning how to manage those situations like for me i was just like i've got no idea how to do this right now i cannot physically get you up literally luckily i got them into a safe position where they were safe and they weren't going to fall on the floor anymore but it was just yeah it was a complete shocker it completely threw me off but just to make you aware that you are walking to something really unexpected if you're a GP or community nurse, going to people's houses and even in your clinic, it is, yeah. And for those of you that think the GP is somewhere to retire to and you're going to be bored, absolutely not. 
every day is different like I just said like you're just thrown into these emergency situations and you deal with it at the time so yeah expect the unexpected guys oh and if you're not on my twitter or instagram um facebook anything like that this is my new scrubs i got some new scrubs i know they're unicorn ones they were specially made for me i know i love them they're amazing i'm sorry if you don't like unicorns and bright scrubs i love them but yes um so i've been saving these because they're a completely brand new fresh clean uniform i've been saving them for my home visits because our home visits are is for the shielded patients so i wanted a completely separate uniform to go out to those patients with just to prevent that cross contamination or keeping that extra bit of infection control anyway even though i wash my uniform it's over 60 anyway but it's just that extra safety precaution so i'm using these scrubs purely for home visits now and then saving my other uniform for my clinics so it's just that extra precaution and i love them and the patients seem to love them i only had one comment of the day that they sort of looked at me a little bit and they were like so i'm assuming you've got a lot of children today i was like no, I just I love unicorns and they were made for me so I feel obliged to wear them and I don't care. <laughs> this week also kicked off my new thing that I've added to my list of jobs and roles to do is I've started doing some sexual health webinars. These are live webinars, like little bite size sort of training session kind of things. And I started that on Monday. It was my very first one. I'd never done anything like that before. Thank you so much if you're watching this and you joined. Thank you so much for joining in and watching. If you haven't joined, there's going to be some more coming up. There's a link below. Have a look at the link below because there's so many of these little bite-sized training modules that are amazing. Michaela and the whole team behind it are fantastic and they do such amazing um, training sessions. It's really good to book in and get yourselves on these training sessions because you're going to learn so, so much to put into practice. It's amazing. I learn something new every time I watch these the fantastic so yeah so look out for that i'll be doing the sexual health stuff because that's my love and yeah passion as some of you know so it's something i can talk about all day long and not have to script it so yes that's what i chose to do um but if you can join in please join in and if you're going to join in please 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 at the end of the sessions there is a feedback evaluation form as well please any advice any tips that you can give me on how to improve what you'd like to see more of in these webinars, what you'd like to see less of in these webinars, please tell me because this is the first time I've done anything like this and I haven't got a clue what people want to know or what, what people need to know. And sexual health is just a minefield of 101 different things. So it's hard to narrow down and figure out what to put into these webinars. So any feedback is absolutely much appreciated, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So apart from all of that, I haven't really done much different to what I've normally spoke about before. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more confident now in my role. I feel like I'm not bothering people as much as I was because when I first started, I was knocking on everyone's doors constantly saying, I don't know what to do or I just need a second opinion or I'm now I'm using my own judgment a little bit more. I'm, I'm sort of trusting my own judgments and feeling a bit more confident in what I'm, I'm doing. Um, whereas before I knew what I was doing, but I was having to just get that second opinion and just be like, oh, is this OK? And they'd be like, yeah, it's fine, Claire, don't worry. But now I've got that a bit more confidence in me. It's going a, a lot more smoother and a lot more better. So, yeah, from that angle, it's going really well. I'm waiting to start my primary care course in September. Um, hopefully it's not going to be cancelled or delayed again because I really, really want to go on it. And yeah, it, it's just going to be amazing. I want to learn to do smear tests and the baby IMS. I'm not looking forward to doing baby IMS, by the way, guys, but you need to do it as a GP nurse. So that is what I'm signing up for and going to be learning in September. Um, along with a load of other long-term management and stuff like that long-term condition management sorry and stuff like that so I will be doing more and vlogging all about my course when that time comes apart from that not oh apart from that no something else exciting has happened over the last couple of weeks I've discovered a new series I know I'm behind guys I'm always behind with these things Killing Eve is amazing if you watch it comment below oh my god spoiler alert I'm not going to, I'm going to try and avoid doing any spoiler alerts, um, but it's amazing. I've binge watched Killing Eve over the last two weeks and I'm now on halfway through season three, guys. I know. What has my life become? This is what my life is now. 
I find something and I binge watch it because I don't really watch much television normally anyway. I'm so busy um, doing social media stuff or vlogging or blogging or doing my normal job. Um, I, I don't watch telly properly. So I found this and I'm literally just sitting and binge watching it. It's amazing. So um, a couple of spoiler alerts for people. Sorry. But those of you that have watched it reply to me um, as if she stabbed her. Why would you do that? I can't believe she stabbed her. I was mortified and I'm, I'm really not happy with Eve right now. Not happy. I thought they were going to love each other and go off in the sunset and be amazing together. No. Stabby, stabby. Thanks, Eve. Ruined it. And then Villanella shot her. Just like that. Not even a care in the world. What is going on? She left her for dead, guys. Why? Why is this show? And you know what? I'm halfway through season three. I still have no idea who the blimmin' 12 are. What's going on? <laughs> Just, wah! You need to watch it. So yes, I'm going to stop talking about Killing Eve. But yes, so I'm going to shut up now because I feel like I've just waffled about rubbish. I know, but I just thought I'd give you a little update where I'm at, what I'm doing. I'm feeling exhausted, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's so tough being a newly qualified nurse in a pandemic, but we're getting there, hopefully. Um, but I hope everyone else is OK. Being a student nurse, oh my God, must be even worse, I think, in a stu in this pandemic right now. I know there's a lot of things going on at the minute. They're pulling people, pulling the paid placements for people and cutting the contracts short. And I know that's really stung a lot of people out there because they've made these home life adjustments and things like that. And it's really going to affect people. Hopefully something is going to be done about it. We all want paid placements anyway. Make it happen, government. Come on, we know you've got the money because you've been spending money here there and everywhere during this covid pandemic so pull your finger out pay student nurses what they deserve and just yeah just no no more to say about that <laughs> come on i'm gonna really be unprofessional about it if i keep going on so yes student nurses you all deserve more absolutely but anyway, my point was, I hope everyone's okay. Take some time out for yourself. Recharge, re-energise. If you need that extra support, please seek help and advice. My inbox is always open if anyone's struggling. If anyone wants to message me, I will always reply. So yeah, you're not alone. You are all in this together. I'm here with you, even though I'm a newly qualified nurse, probably far away from you. I'm here with you, supporting you, rooting through for you. I'm standing by you. So yeah, I hope you're all okay. Keep, keep well, keep safe and I shall see you all next time.